Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here with the shoe guru, Jordan Jesus, Nike J. Hi. <laughs> now, this is my buddy Jim. He's actually the only guy that I know of that collects, uh, he collects shoes and some apparel items. And um, this fits the topic of the video because he's going to tell us about uh, bots and a much more aggressive uh, collector market, believe it or not. We're going to talk about scalpers, bots, and um, are the companies that sell these items, are they involved in all of this, uh, this these underhanded dealings with, uh, so. For sure. For sure. Maybe, maybe not even directly involved, but I'm pretty sure that there's employees involved in some of this stuff. Oh, a thousand percent. Uh, like high up employees. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about a, a topic that was hot last week. The what was it? The CEO of Nike, her son running a a, a resale business, a reselling business. Yes, the VP of Nike resigned last week because it was found out that her son was running a resale business for shoes and apparel. And her name was on the credit card that was used to purchase the majority of these items. She can say she wasn't involved, but, uh, I mean, he was, and she had to know to some extent after seeing the charges on the card. And, I mean, it's all bad. The fish rots from the head, which yeah. is what I was told. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at the fact that if you're the VP of Nike, you're making some serious money, so... Why would you necessarily want to be involved in a reseller's market? Or do you think that maybe it was just to to help her son get his uh, make his fortune or whatever? Oh, it was definitely to help her son. But some people are just greedy. Some people just aren't satisfied with the nine to five, and they're willing to to dip their toe in the waters, no matter the cost. Which it totally cost her so much money, dude, and her career. Like she's done. She'll never yeah. work in an industry like that again. No, she'll never be VP of Nike or anything like that again. I don't never. Think. But uh, this this relates to some of the things that, that we've seen in the action figure market with like Target exclusives and whatnot. Uh, because guys have, um, have literally caught Target employees hiding product so that they can go buy it later and keeping it away from the, uh, the regular consumers. Um, whenever Target drops a new figure... It's sold out within seconds. Like, I mean, you literally don't even have time to put it in your cart and buy it before it's sold out. You just don't get it. Yeah, but that's regular, though. That's, like, for, for me, I've been dealing with that since, like, 2012. So. And that's on, you, you primarily, I assume, buy from websites and stores that sell Correct. online. Correct. So how do, you, uh, how do you get around that? How do you get what you collect? Uh... I mean, for the past couple years, I've been doing a lot of buying from resellers. Uh, I'll buy stuff I can at retail, and then if I don't want it, I flip it. But I just choose not to run a bot anymore. I used to run a bot in 2012 through about 2016, and it's just advanced so much, and there's so, it's insane. There's so many things involved with botting that it's difficult to keep up unless you are in a group because i mean it's to the point where i saw a bot that was fifteen hundred dollars so fifteen hundred dollars for a bot now uh, a lot of the people that are going to be watching this video probably don't know what a bot is can you explain that okay basically it's an add to cart system where uh they have bots for specific websites and they have bots for general use and Basically, you set the program up, you have an early link to the product, you put the product link in, you put your payment information in, and about five minutes before that, you hit go, and it just auto-refreshes as the cart checks out within seconds. And they have like millisecond timers on the refresh. So it's a program. Correct. And, okay. and like some websites have security measures to stop bots, but that's where you program. I want this to refresh every eight milliseconds. So you check out fast, but not too fast, but still faster than anyone's fingers could ever type. I mean, it's... So it's a whole lot more involved than just putting a program onto a computer. Oh, for and, sure. 
and just running it to buy the product that you're looking for. For sure, for sure. Uh, you can buy a bot that does Supreme, for example, which I'm wearing a Supreme hat, but you can buy a bot that runs Supreme. Then you have to buy proxies because if you have too many tasks, which is how, uh, how many times it's trying to add to cart, if you have too many tasks on one IP address, they'll ban your IP address. So you buy these proxies that give you 10, 15, 20, 100 different IP addresses. Then you also have to have different payments. And then you also have to modify your address at some point. So this is all stuff that you have to purchase. Uh, what, what kind of money are you talking about to run a, uh, a Supreme bot? Like, let's say you want to buy uh, Supreme hats. To run a good shirts. Supreme bot? For all the proxies and for the credit cards and to buy the Gmail accounts, you're probably looking at a grand. And that's that's if they keep it up to date and that's if it's going good. And honestly, it's not even guaranteed. I mean, it's, it's hit or miss because I've seen bots crush it. Supreme has a, uh, they call them seasons. And they have 15 to 20 week seasons. And... Week number one, two, three, you could crush it and then you could just whiff for five in a row because they, they're they they're constantly changing their security. They're limited products. They understand that. They Supreme does it smart, though, because they say our product is based off exclusivity, which I'm assuming like Target exclusives. Yeah. They say we're only going to make a thousand of these or we're only going to make 5,000 of these. We know that 10,000 people want them. So if a 1,000 of these sell out, then the other 9,000 still want one of these. And they will continue to try on the next release. So they keep the people wanting more. It's, I mean, it's genius. So it's limiting the supply to keep people baited in. And, For sure. You know, we, we see people in the, uh, in, like with the Target exclusive, people... Uh, uh, just buying a ton of them and just you know hanging on to them, which you know people collect however they want to collect. Um, but then you get into the uh, the flipping and the scalping and whatnot. And it's uh, I, I've made a video before explaining the difference between somebody that's flipping something, uh, somebody that's a reseller, and uh, what a scalper actually is. And a scalper, just to go ahead and throw that back out again, a scalper is someone who depletes the supply so that they control the demand. And the shoe people are the worst. I'm so, telling you, I promise on everything, you guys think you have it bad. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> shoes are the most toxic thing. <clears throat> and like, I started off in shoes, like as far as like buying, and I would buy stuff. I would flip it to get something I wanted. Like, I'll get one or two. You know, I'll, I might buy three, flip two, so my, my pair is paid for, and that's fine. But... In 2019, I started finding out about cook groups. And <laughs> you basically pay a monthly fee to join a Discord. And they have literally everything under the sun. They're flipping swimming pools from Walmart. They're buying Funko Pops. And, like, literally, I've seen so many people say, we dictate the market if we buy X amount. And, and it's true. Because all they have to do is buy them, hold on to them, and say... We're not selling for anything less than this. Now, at the same time, you always get that one broke ass who wants to be like big time reseller guy, but he's taking his rent money and he's buying stuff. And they say, we're not selling for anything less than $500. Okay, so similar to what we just saw happen with uh, uh, Wall Street Bets and GameStop yeah. stock and AMC. Yeah. Okay. But you always get that one guy, and, and he starts an avalanche. Because if everybody says no less than 500 then one person sells for 350 because they need the money now. And then next thing you know, it flips from a, from a seller's market to a buyer's market in a heartbeat. Now, if you continue to hold on to it, normally you can make, like, normally you can get it back up. But it's a struggle, and then all the rest of the sellers are mad. Like, you've got people that are trying to buy that are mad because they want the cheaper price. Like, I'm telling you, man, like, 2021, 2020 is the worst time to try to collect or enjoy anything because, I mean, PS5s, 
Oh yeah, the PS5 Xboxes, thing was ridiculous. Like the the whole thing, and I I saw people in shoe groups because like at that point they don't care about shoes; they're just trying to make money on anything they can. And I'm not against that. Make make your money, do your thing. Oh yeah, I totally support the free market. I mean, that's what it is. But it gets a little out of hand when you got <laughs> Joe Blow down the road who's sitting on 15 Playstations and he's like, I'm, not, sell I'm not selling anything for less than a grand. And then people are eating them up. And it's like, yeah. what well, is, it's like the gun market right now. The gun is, market's ridiculous. Is that work? It would you, would you consider that work? You sit in front of your computer, you dropped a grand, you invested a thousand dollars on a bot to run Walmart and Target. To buy PlayStations. Yeah. And that that's fine. But, I mean, are you really working? Did you really earn the money? I don't think so. I mean, I'm not hating at all. Like, make your money, but I don't know, man. So you're talking about investing a thousand bucks or more into a, uh, into a bot in the system to be able to get these exclusives and whatnot or the, uh, the shoes that you want as they drop to make sure that you're in that top tier that gets them in your cart and gets them paid for. Um, why are these people willing to invest a grand on something they're not a hundred percent sure is going to work a hundred percent of the time? What kind of return are you looking or what kind of return are they looking at if they buy up a bunch of shoes or like the target exclusives? Okay, so honestly, it just depends on on what you're trying to buy. So, like, PlayStations were only going to be hot for six months. Like, everybody was like, I have to buy a PlayStation before Christmas. They're going to be hot until Christmas and then after that. Well, then we found out that there was a shortage of microelectronics, and they're going to be harder to get for a little longer. And that's fine. Like, so your investment is going to last a little longer. Shoes never stop dropping. Uh Target exclusives never stop dropping. So at that point, you have to decide, like, is it going to be worth it? They're never going to stop dropping toys or shoes. No. So if you buy a bot, then is it worth it? Are you going to are you gonna be up on time? Are you going to be at your house? Uh, can you afford to miss a week or two? Yeah, because it doesn't just run by itself. You exactly. have to physically... Put yeah, effort into making this work. Yeah, the bot only does what you tell it to do, and you also have to understand how to run it. You also have to rent your proxies. Like, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes into it, which is why I stopped. Like, back when bots were basic, I ran it all day and had a good time, and it was a great run. But it, if things keep going the way that they're going with the the toys, the GI Joes, and stuff like that. It may end up being something similar to how Nike Nike did it, where they have a draw system, which is going to make it even worse. They said that they did it so they could stop the resellers, and it literally just made it worse. So one thing that, uh, that Hasbro's been doing, one of Hasbro's, uh, not really a distributor, but one of Hasbro's main uh, selling sources is Hasbro Pulse. They put out items, and they'll limit like one per household wrong or two per household wrong that that's not how it works right because i've seen guys get multiple i actually i've done it myself get multiple items delivered to their house yeah because you can jig the system literally everyone i know lives in an apartment complex if you can put your uh put your address in correctly because you say i live on this street in this city and i live in apartment number one which could be your living room. And then you say apartment number two, which is your kitchen. And I mean... I've so basically every room in your house could be a different address. You don't even... Put it in right. You could live in a studio apartment, which is one room, and say, I live in an apartment complex. And you can just change your address. And you can buy as many as you can afford or as many as you can get in your cart quick enough. Like, I don't know. Everybody acts like... You can stop resellers. Resellers are not stopping. No, it'll Just, never stop. It'll never stop. And it will continue to advance. I'm telling you, like, the stuff that you're seeing with with your hobby now is stuff that I saw five years ago. And I'm telling you, the companies are like, we're going to stop this. We want to make sure everybody gets what they want. We want to stop the resellers. Because, honestly, I mean, the company wants to make the money. 
They want to make as much as they, they possibly can. Right. So they're going to make more, which will, on like, in turn, drive the demand down, which they can't be having that. That actually happened with uh, Masters of the Universe. Those figures that are hanging up there, uh, they just mass produce the shit out of those. Right, and, and it drives the demand down. Yeah. So then they have to find that fine line. So then what they do is, and I'm not hating on Nike or Adidas or any any company that says this, but they say, we're going to stop the resellers. And how do they do that? They make it a random draw. So right? it's like a lottery to buy the product. Yeah, but... I don't run a bot anymore. I don't I don't have Gmail accounts that are extra. I don't have a ton of payment options because I don't care enough to get one of those virtual credit cards. Like there's just a whole lot of things that I'm just not willing to do because my time is worth more. So I get one lottery ticket. I get one chance to get what I want. I haven't won a drawing on sneakers app in a year just because like I don't care enough to try that hard. Like and some people are, and, and that's fine. Well, back when you were doing that, you were running bots basically for your own collection. For sure, yeah. And, and like I said, if I bought any extra, it was literally to pay for my pair. Like, I was buying stuff that I liked. Yeah. And, like, if I can get an extra pair or two, or if my friends wanted a pair. Like, I had several people be like, hey, can you help me get a pair? And I'm like, well, of course I'll try. But now, with the draw... I have one lottery ticket to win, and if Terry's running a bot, he could have a hundred or a thousand, and he might hit on ten. He might hit on fifty, but I mean, I've got one chance. Like, so when they say we're gonna stop the botters and we're gonna stop the resellers, it's a joke. It just makes it worse. If it's frustrating, I've seen so many people say, "I'm <coughs> done. I'm done. I'm not even gonna do this anymore." I'm. I'm restricted to buying off resellers. And see, we're seeing the same thing, man, is, is people giving up. And I, I've said before that if you want it, get out there and put the work in to get it. But at the same time, like, if, like, say there's a Walmart exclusive that I want. If I drive around, let's say, a, a 60 mile, to every Walmart in a 60 mile radius, I may not find anything. So by the time I spend that money and fuel my time away from home, uh, normally I'll stop and, and have lunch somewhere. And, uh, you know, it just it's, it's an afternoon or all day event. Right. And I may come home with nothing. And you know what? Some people would just love to make a day of it. Hey, it's an adventure. Let's go do that. Some people have other stuff to do. When you have multiple days in a row like that... Or multiple weeks like that. Like me, I can I can get out and go hunt one to two days a week if right. I want to. And like just go out and spend spend an afternoon just going around different stores and going and whatnot. But uh, you know, if, if I do that two or three weeks in a in a row, I've spent let's say let's say I spent sixty bucks in fuel, food, whatever in a uh, in a in a day outing. That's also not accounting for your time. Exactly. That's not accounting for my time that I could be working on my business or doing right. stuff at my home or whatever. But just in money that I'm going to be out on that trip, let's let's say 60 bucks. I do that twice. It's 120 bucks. Uh, the Cover Island Troopers, at, at the time, going for around 100 to 120. I could have just bought one and saved myself a lot of effort. Now, it sucks that I would have to pay five times retail right. for it, but... To find it at retail, you know, it's I'm spending right. that money anyway. Yeah, and and like I said, man, it's it's all in what you want. Like I've fell back from shoes some, just because I have other stuff going on. I work so much, and like I really like some of that stuff with the bots is really complicated, and and it's to the point where <clears throat> when I joined the cook group, it's to the point where you can't buy some bots. Unless you do a group buy, they say, we're not selling you this bot and we know this bot's good and, and we've tested it and we update it constantly. We won't sell it to you unless you buy five, like a hundred copies at X amount of dollars. A hundred copies at a thousand bucks a piece or $500 a piece. Yeah, even at $500 a piece, they're making an insane amount and they're not selling to anyone that will buy less than X amount of copies. So who makes these? 
just random random programmers and i mean everything i found out about that was either from the, the discord group i joined or twitter like because i've done i've done a ton of research like i joined the cook group literally just to see what it was like i've heard about them i've seen people talk about them on you know some of my shoe groups on facebook i mean it really piqued my interest and once I got in there, I was like, these guys will flip their grandmother for a profit. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, they don't So care. it's guys that don't even necessarily collect. They're not even in the hobby. They're for just sure. There for, they're just there to make a quick buck. For sure. Those are those are the scalpers. Those are the guys that don't give a damn. Like, because they are controlling the market. For sure. Yeah. Like, they don't care what they're buying. They will buy, like, if they go, hey... You can buy this beach ball at Walmart for a dollar and sell it on eBay for five. They're buying every single one of them. And it's a beach ball. Like, who who hoards beach balls? These weirdos do. <laughs> and I'm not... I, make your money. It's just weird to me. It's weird. Like, I love money more than the average person. And it it's just excessive to me. It's excessive. It's insane. Like, I've seen people camp in Walmart... To buy basketball cards. Am I mad at them? No. Is it strange? They're basketball cards. Man, back when I was in my late teens, early 20s working at Walmart, I remember when the uh, there was an Xbox that came out. And I don't remember which one it was, but we had chairs lined up in layaway because that's where they were going to be distributing them. We had people in there two days before that thing came out. Two days! They stayed in Walmart. And I'm talking like... Sit in a chair. Don't give up your spot. You sit in that chair. No shower. Nothing. Have somebody come and bring you food. Eh, that's but but those guys were probably getting them to play them, and yeah. that's the thing. Like I like I said, I'm not mad at people for making money. I'm not. One guy had his had his seat so that he could sell it. He ended up selling it to somebody who got kicked out of the store. It, <laughs> but if you genuinely want it that bad and it's for you, like I have more respect for that. Yeah. Like that's your hobby. Like that's what you do for enjoyment. Even if even if it's buying a pair of shoes. Like I have some shoes that I've never worn and I might wear them one day. I might sell them. Like but I, when I bought them, I fully intended like I will have those. Those will be mine. I'm going to put the effort in. I'm going to put the time and it might have been a relationship that I had made over the years or it might have been me paying a reseller, but I want it that bad. I'm willing to do it. But, yeah, but I don't put that much effort in to be like, I want to make fifty bucks this week. Like, right? I can. I'm going to work for that. Like, yeah, it, come like on. making fifty bucks just isn't really worth your time unless yeah. you're making, you know, uh, that oh, a few times over. Right. Whatever. But you know, that's like I'll go out and I'll I'll hunt figures and whatnot. Uh, some of like true builders, I'll keep two of them for myself. And anything over that that I buy, I'm buying it because I have a group of friends. And we all kind of look out for each other. Right. And if we find something that we know that one of the other guys wants, we'll go ahead and buy it and post it up in a group chat. I've got this. Who needs it? Or we'll take a picture in the store. Hey, who needs this? I'm here for like another 20 minutes. And, and not everyone is toxic like that in those groups. Like I'm in one particular issue group where literally they call each other family like you have to be vouched for to get in it's a very limited number of people and a lot of times guys will go to a store and say hey they've got this you know i'm at the outlet and they have this where they shouldn't have or whatever does anybody want one i'll be here for three hours and looking out for your people is super commendable and i i like that that's the part of the community that i do enjoy but there's also other groups where it's it's just a hot dumpster fire. <laughs> and like part of me is like, I should just leave because there's nothing of value here for me. I'm getting nothing out of this. And then the other part is like watching the Titanic sink. Like I can't look away. It's super entertaining. Just watching everybody screw each other. Oh over. my God. And the people are so just toxic in those groups. Like there's there's one group where an admin left. He got mad. And he said, you know what? To hell with this. And he added 20,000 people <laughs> to the group. He just mass added everyone who, who asked to get in and then just left. And like, oh my. 
dude. <laughs> the inmates were running the asylum at that point. They couldn't kick them fast enough. <laughs> and it's like, y'all are y'all are wild. Y'all are wild. Here. I'm here to chill in my little, my small group, which is not necessarily like a small, small group, but it's like small enough where I know someone, there, there's like two degrees of separation max between anyone in that group. And we're all vouched for, we all know we're solid. I've seen very few deals go south and I've seen a lot more where something bad happens and it's rectified immediately. Now, sometimes the guys are petty and they say, hey, well, this didn't happen. I'm calling you out. But the admins are super strong in there. You know, everybody else is like, hey, everybody calm down. It's good. In the the 100,000 people group, it's just monkeys throwing shit at the window. <laughs> it's like, what are y'all doing in here? Who who even comes here to try to make a deal anymore? Yeah, dude, it's like the few groups that I run. I have a very short list of rules. And there's a couple of those rules that, like, if somebody if somebody breaks one of those rules, I, I just boo them. I don't even bother talking to them about it or, or whatever, or deleting their posts. I'll just remove them from the group. With the, with the smaller group I'm in, I want to say there's, like, maybe five admins. And we all know one of them some way. Yeah. So... And, and, like, we've all done so many deals. Like, there's two different groups. It's like, one is a garage sale group, and the other one is a strictly shoe group. I've made a mistake and posted, you know, stuff for the garage sale group in the shoe group. Yeah. Now, that's one of the main rules. Like, only shoes in here, garage sale group. Yeah, see, I have rules like that, too. And I'm not going to boot somebody over right. that. But I will boot somebody over, like, shitting on somebody else for, you know, something they post for sale or whatever. Well, it... Then that comes like to what what click are you in? <laughs> and I'm not mad. Like I'm not yeah. part of the cool kids club. Like I I just kind of sit back and I'll do my deals and and I have my group that I'm cool with. But I don't expect any special favors or anything. But I've seen some people do some out of pocket stuff, and I actually saw two people like shit talk each other for an entire day, and then they locked the comments, left the post up, locked the comments. Two days later, both of them are still in the group. Hey, guys, just avoid each other. That's all we can say. Yeah. And I'm not mad at that. I mean, they, they've they all done solid deals with several people. It's just those two guys couldn't get along. How many people are you talking about in these groups, though? Because, I mean, like the, the G.I. Joe groups and the toy groups and whatnot, for the most part, uh, there's a couple of them that are like, you know, well over 10,000. And then there's a lot of smaller ones that are around – a thousand to five thousand. See the small the small group that I'm talking about, I wanna say is in between a thousand and fifteen hundred. Uh I was in from the first week. I got an invite from a friend. I didn't know what it was. I joined. I'm thankful because he got me out of the giant group and got me into a a more focused like because you have in shoes anyway, you have people that deal with this stuff range between 13 to 50 or older yeah and there's a lot more adults in the smaller group like a oh lot. don't get me wrong dude these toy groups it's all like dudes in their late 30s early 40s and older well it's just it's just crazy but we all have friends and mutual friends and to get in the one group you had to have at minimum two people vouch for you that are already in the group that are already known as solid and if if you make a mistake and you get booted from that group, they go too. Like that that keeps it a thousand. Like you can't if you mess it up for you, you're messing it up for the people that helped you get in. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody get saved from that. Like I've seen a couple people get booted and they're like, sorry, but you vouched for him. And they're like, Yeah, yeah but it wasn't my deal. It's like, no, you gotta go. Like you're the one that said he was straight. And everybody makes mistakes and people change, but I mean, that's the thing. Don't don't put your neck out there unless you're ready to have your head lopped off. Like you've right. got to trust that person. So, I mean, I want to say that I've got one person in that group. Me personally, I vouch for one guy and he came in and that dude's like my brother. Like me and him have done so many deals, like just retail deals, or I'll just send him random stuff and he'll send me random stuff. Super and see, solid. you know, I have some, I have some friends like that in toy groups too. We send each other stuff all the time. 
So, so I mean, it's not always about money and like, and we we tell each other that all the time. Like, I'm more concerned with the circle that I build and the and the friends that I gain from this. Now, if you're a stranger, I'm sorry, I'm taking all your money. But, <laughs> but so you mentioned people uh, spending that kind of money on bots and whatnot to buy a Supreme. What kind of uh, purchase price versus resale value? What what kind of prices are you looking at in the secondary market? Well, I mean, I bought a Supreme hoodie, a, a literal basic box logo. That's what they call it, the box logo. It's a gray hoodie. I paid $180 after tax and shipping for it. And I sold it for $1,350. So... <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it's kind of insane. Now, granted, I did hold on to it for a little over a year, and then I listed it for the price that I wanted to sell it for. I listed it through a, a secondary selling company called StockX. They basically middleman the transaction, make sure it's authentic, which a lot of people appreciate nowadays. But and, and the price of box logos have gone down as far as the secondary market. But I mean. If you can buy a hoodie for $180 and then flip it for a thousand, like yeah. it, it's hard to say no to. Like I bought it to wear, but then after I saw how much they were selling for, I just sat on it for a little bit. I said, I'll wear it next year because I got it late in the season. The hoodie season was almost over. So I held on to it. And then after I saw how much I could sell it for, I said, to hell with this. I'll buy it. I'll buy another hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy a Nike hoodie and then You'll have a thousand dollars. Wipe your tears away with hundred dollar bills. Right. So let's see some of these shoes that you uh that you collect and we'll talk about uh retail versus secondary market prices on those. Okay, so this is the box, Nike box. Uh it says Nike swoosh. This is an off white presto. And I wanna say the retail on this was 160 180 and right now if you can find a pair that's dead stock which means never been worn then you're looking to pay about a thousand dollars for a size 12 and that's with no fees that's with nothing if you're lucky and you know somebody you can find a pair for cheaper have you worn those i have worn them uh two or three times and yeah they're a little dusty but yeah like, I like the shoes, so I bought them. I mean, I got lucky. And Is there ever a point in time where you could see yourself wearing those again? Oh, for sure. Like, I wore these quite a few times last year. Like, they were super comfortable. And it's kind of a lightweight flex. Like, it, it's kind of one of them things where, like... <laughs> like, if you're at a show or something. Right. Yeah, they, there are shoe shows. Oh, yeah, correct. I've, I've been to a shoe show in Louisville. And I plan on going to one in Indianapolis here soon. And I've heard it's insane. Like, and some people will buy shoes for a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand or more just to wear to a shoe show or just to take pictures for Instagram. And then they'll flip them immediately. And I mean, for me, they're comfortable. I like them. Like, they're super basic. They're just black and white shoes. But if, if you know what you're looking at, then you know. Like, I was wearing them in a picture that got posted on Facebook last year. And one of the guys that was in my, my small shoe group was like, hey, he's wearing, like, some $1,000 shoes. And I was like, you know, it happens sometimes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I have these What the Cubbies, which they have a, a secondary price tag on them. Let's say seven hundred dollars. I bought those probably five years ago, six years ago. But they're multicolored. I've worn them quite a bit. Like, don't even care. I'll just stomp around in them. Like, I don't wear them during the winter time, but summertime they're a crazy shoe. They get a lot of lot of looks. Uh, anyone that doesn't know shoes likes them because they're mismatched. Anyone that does know shoes will call me out and say, hey, I know that you're like an OG sneakerhead or or fairly close to OG sneakerhead because nobody wears these anymore. Anybody that buys stuff like this now strictly buys it to flip. I, I'm in it just 
because I'm a collector and I like certain things. Like, I'm a big Kobe fan. I bought the shoes because I like Kobe. I like the shoes. And, you know, I don't mind the attention. I don't really care. If nobody says anything, I don't mind at all. But So do you ever buy any shoes like that that you just won't wear? You strictly bought them to have in your collection. Oh, for sure. And and actually, I got I had a pair that was like the what the Kobe 8s. And they were a Shanghai exclusive. I bought them because I love the colorway. And I wanted them in my collection. And I had planned on wearing them. But to me, in my personal opinion, they were such a beautiful shoe that I could not bring myself to wear them. So I sold them last year. I, they were a sample pair. With them being a Shanghai exclusive, I had only ever seen one other size 12. Like posted anywhere or anything that were legit and those were selling for two grand i ended up selling my pair last year for i want to say 1350 but it was part of that small group that i'm in and the guy that i sold them to he was super cool first time i'd met him and i i'm pretty sure that if i needed some help then he would help me out and vice versa like I made a connection in my circle. So that was worth more to me than an extra two, three, five hundred bucks. Like, because you never know. Like, if you need help, you need help. Yeah. And and the guy that bought them, obviously, I mean, if you're paying thirteen fifty, thirteen seventy five for a pair of shoes, you got some hookups. You know, like you can help out a little bit. So So in the uh in the in the different collector worlds, you're you're obviously uh, dealing with much larger sums of money than what a lot of people in the uh, in the action figure world are dealing with uh, per item, at least. Yeah. Um, what do you think would make any of this better? You said earlier that it was only going to get worse whenever uh, whenever companies start to say they're going to control the reseller market, they're going to control the scalpers. Uh, what do you mean exactly that it's going to get worse? And what would make it better? What I mean by it's going to get worse is that when the companies try to to make it more difficult for resellers, all they're doing is making it more difficult for the average person. Like, it's already bad enough with bots. Like, Terry's explained to me that they're gone in seconds. Like, I've dealt with that. And I, I had bought basic bots to deal with that. And it helped me out. It increased the percentage that I hit it exponentially. It was insane. I was hitting on things I never thought I would hit on just because I had a simple basic bot that would add to cart, auto-fill, checkout. Everything was great. But once people started complaining to the company about, oh, bot, 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 they said, okay, then we're going to change it. And all they did was make it worse because they made it harder for the average Joe who has one lottery ticket who has one bot who fills out one thing as opposed to the guy that says, Hey, I'm going to run a hundred tasks because I have a thousand dollar bot. I have a hundred proxies. I have 10 payment methods and I've jigged my address to say I have 50 rooms in my house. The only thing that can make it better. And like, to me, the companies are never going to help you. What you need to do. My advice is you need to get you a close close-knit group of friends and you all need to work together and if that means that you you have to group buy a bot together 10 people that are solid then you do that because once the company steps in once a target steps in once a walmart steps in once a hasbro steps in and they say we're limiting this once they limit it more it's a wrap you guys are like i'm not gonna say you're done but without any help from a bot or a group of you guys working together, it it's just going to go downhill. All the small people that are actually genuinely collectors, you're not going to be able to collect anything without paying resale. And that that's just sad, man. It is. So this comes back to uh, what I had said in a previous video. Make friends with people. For sure. And help each other out. For sure. That means that might mean selling a, a thousand dollar pair of shoes for five hundred bucks or whatever you paid for them. That might mean selling a uh, a figure that you paid twenty bucks for 
you know, sell it for 25, 30 bucks. You can't do it alone. Yeah. Like everybody thinks they can do it alone and don't let your pride stop you from doing what you enjoy. Because I'm telling you, it's just going to get worse. A, a tight circle of friends is worth more than any profit that you can have if you were a genuine collector. Like you need, If you're a genuine collector. Correct. You need friends. Now, if you're reselling, hey, fail away. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need you to make a ton of money. Like, whatever. But, like, friends, and especially if you can get a small, tight-knit group that are like-minded people. Like, you don't have to be super tight with everybody. But as long as you have a couple of guys that you're super solid with that you know will look out for you and you can look out for them, you'll be straight. Like, See, that's one of the works. things that, that, that really got me uh, as big into collecting now is what I have. It's not so much about like, hey, look at these cool figures that I've right. got. Or I've got this thing that I can sit in a room and look at. It's, it's more about the friends that I've made right. along the way. And the people that I talk to on a daily basis or the people that live half the country away that I've gotten to spend a weekend with and hang out with and whatnot. You know, it's, it's, it really is about making that group of friends. If you make those friends, you won't always have to pay scalper prices or reseller prices. or You won't always have to pay uh, market value. For sure. And, and market value is only dictated by what someone's willing to pay. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that. Like, I don't need a pair of shoes right now. I have a pair of shoes on. I don't need the the thousand dollar pair of shoes right now. I can wait. I can say that the max that I will pay is eight hundred dollars or six hundred dollars, and it might never drop that low. And I might cave in one day, but it won't be today. Or, or with my group of friends, I might say, hey. I'm looking for this pair of shoes. I'm not looking for a handout. I know that they retail for two hundred dollars, but if somebody could help me find a pair for six hundred bucks, like that's what I would prefer to pay. And my friends will try to help me out. So I mean, I'm telling you, like leaning on other people, and, and but you have to return the favor too. You can't be somebody asking for a handout all the time. Like you, you have to pull your own weight in that group as well. So I'm telling you, a, a tight knit group. That it, that is like minded. You need the like minded part for sure. But with with that, you can make almost anything happen. It might not be immediate, and everybody misses out on something that they want, like every now and again. But with a group like that, I mean, it you can have what you want the majority of the time without paying insane prices. Yeah, that actually uh, happened uh, with me earlier. Well, late last year uh dude that i've become friends with we traded a couple things back and forth uh sold each other some stuff well there was a set of figures that i wanted and it was about a 150 dollars set of figures just loose with no accessories whatever he ended up getting those in a trade i get packaged one day and he he said you know he sent me those figures that he got the ones that i've been looking for and i had other people looking for them too I'm telling you, it works. Like I've I've had a friend say, "Hey, can you can you try for a pair of sneakers for me?" And they're 160 bucks retail plus tax, but the resale was 500 plus dollars. I literally got on my account, I won the pair, had them shipped directly to him, and he thanked me, and I knew I did my good deed for the day. Like, and, and he's looked out for me as well, but. I could have made three hundred dollars off that. I could have made four hundred dollars off that. Right. Would it have been worth it? Especially if he knew that I had him. Like, because I've seen people do that too. Like, you think that they're your friend. They hit on something that they didn't think they would hit, and they go, "Oh, well, I'm sorry. Like, I'm gonna make an extra fifty dollars profit. Cool, buddy. Next time you need my help, cut it out, bro. <laughs> you get nothing from me. You're getting cut <laughs> off, like." Because I, I can only help you so many times, and, and you can only screw me over so many times. Right. All right, thanks for watching Action Media Reviews. Thanks, Jim, for coming over, hanging out, and telling us, giving us a little bit of insight into another collector community and uh, what bots really are and where that, uh, where that internal corruption comes from with some of these companies. Uh, if you 
check out somewhere here on the screen. I've got links to other projects that I have and uh, there's another video or something. Check out the description. There is a link to uh, purchase um, Action Media Reviews t-shirts and uh, products, apparel, whatnot. Help support the channel. And uh, there's also links to Facebook groups if you're an action figure collector. Uh, that's what those those links are primarily for. Get out there and make some friends. Build that circle so that you can beat the scalpers and the uh, the flippers. Best luck, fellas.